Kawo Shilon Rastafari. This would be the, I'll call it the continuation to what we hopefully would post before this, and you probably, if this is properly being queued up there, um, this would be the continuation to the message on prayer. On prayer. Now, though most folks and most of us would say, yes, I and I prayer, pray or pray and pray, so forth and so on, and kind of, you know, we, we, we say we do that. The, the real test, the real test of our faith is, is how we deal with and overcome the trials and tribulation. Is the victory truly a, a demonstration of our spirituality, you understand, in spirit and in truth, or are we just, in a sense, um, on that level, making believe? Is this a true faithful prayer, or is it a true make-believe? Now, this is not to judge individuals what this individual does, because people say, well, I pray like this, I pray like that, so forth and so on. But this is to remind our fellow Rastafari, the Rastafari in particular, but in speaking to the greater commonwealth, the greater commonwealth of um, we, the black people of the world, or more circumspectly, those who are part of the commonwealth of the King of Kings and his Christ. We Ethiopian Hebrew nationals. And there's only a slight difference in really how the faithful and true rise to far right. In living in the covenant, living in the contract, and preserving their true birthright, which now becomes reflective in their identity based on nationality, would pray in faith. There's only a, a, there's only a difference of recognition. The principles remain the same for the Ethiopian Hebrew national or the faithful um, Judeo-Christian from an Ethiopian perspective. Remember, that is our, that's, that's our birthright that, and, and it's our nationality as exiled children of the King of Kings and his Christ. So when we talk about citizenship, we must first of all declare a government does not give citizenship. What a government can do, a government can say, we the people, representing the will of the people, we declare such and such and such as a way one can be, what they call it, nationalized. Now, just not to get into some of the, you know, the, the legality, but it's important that we understand the law. The principles, let me, let me rephrase, it's important that we understand the principles, the true Principle. Now I'm saying principle, not king principle. Over saying principles of law. We're not playing, like I say, word games or so forth and so on that really do not change anything in the dynamic, you understand, of the system of things that we are in. You know, the Bible teaches us that um, how they frame uh, mischief by law and by the use of law or the abuse of law or their abusing law and our individual and collective um, ignorance of the law and it's of the principles of the law. When we say law, if we go from an Ethiopic, a Hebrew perspective and we remember where Moshe, our great lawgiver, where he received his initiation and the, and, the, and the wisdom of the Egypts, that he was both mighty in word, that means he could argue the case and indeed and demonstrate the physical and metaphysical phenomenon and phenomena. And this is what we have when they talk about the miracles in the Belui Kidan, in the Torah, the Hebrew, in the Hebrew um, uh, Exodus. 
All right. Now some say, oh, well, a miracle, this or that. Well, from Ethiopically, what we know a miracle is uh, tamarat, right? Basically means it's based on knowledge. When you study the etymology of the Ethiopic miracle in word, the root is based on knowledge. You understand? In other words, those who have higher knowledge, for example, look at the technology today, the cell phone, internet, so forth and so on. This, this is technology. As people, the, the elements still are the same elements here. And some even speculate that the ancients had similar, you understand, or same-ish technology even back there. Some say, no, they couldn't. How could those primitive people so far? Remember, these ancient primitive people, Ethiopian, Hebrews, Yovastan, ancient Egyptians, they were able to chart you know, the heavens and the movements and, 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 and natural signs, phenomena. So they lived in, in terms and, of, of order. You know what I'm saying? And they're still discovering miraculous things. They're just trying to say that they were not our ancestors. You know, they're trying to say that the ancient Egyptians and the, and the ancient Hebrews, who were both black peoples, Afro-Shemitic peoples, that they wasn't our ancestors. And if they were sort of like a maybe, they actually got their technology from another world. Because this is all from a whitewashed, Eurocentric, Gentile misinterpretation. So we have to get past that. And all of this should be non, get off the, emotion, the emotionality, being so emotional about this. I remember when Brother Leonard Jeffries, when he was invited to speak at Brooklyn College, when... I and I organization as an academic club and the first Ethiopic Friday and sorority were part of the Inviti groups, the black groups that invited when Line of Judah, which was the uh, uh, a fraternity or really academic club, they call it. But really, we operate as a fraternity of sorority, the first Ethiopic frat that we know of, LOJ, you understand, in the entire nation. You understand, in the, at, at, ever before. You understand, so brothers and sisters who were a part of that, um, and, and those out there who might be able to continue this, this righteous and upful um, tradition, you understand, should do all in their power. Because, see, that the enemies of our freedom, you understand, of our, of our birthright, because it comes down to birthright. The, the scriptures, the Torah tells you it was all about the birthright issue. You, you see what I'm saying? It's all about that birthright. You see, but many were born wrong. Not just physically, but even psychologically and spiritually. That's why our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshi, he says what? He says, ye must be born again. You know what I'm saying? And now some have interpreted this and has spiritualized only the birth again process. But now we get to recognize that the spiritual rebirth is first and foremost. And now the fruit of that rebirth is our prayer life. You know what I'm saying? Is, is, is the power of not just, just, just um, um, prayer in the, in, 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 in the false sense you might have seen on, on TV or some evil angelical churches or whatnot, so forth and so on, but in the true sense of this B-I-B-L-E, once you're in your proper person. You see, but most of y'all, you know what I'm saying, and even I and I self are not in our proper person if we don't recognize, you know what I'm saying, what is our true name, and by name we're also reflecting title, nationality, and what is our birthright. You see, they, they, there's a principle in law in propitia persona sujuris. You understand? That means to be your proper person before law. You know, and some of you all may be familiar with, I was speaking to a brethren earlier, um, and, and, and a few brethren and sister, and, and it's like everyone I've been speaking to within this uh, short time period, say, from the last Shabbat to the present Shabbat, are all reflections of the increased persecution that is going on against the righteous. And we're seeking to remind brothers and sisters is of, of two things, right? 
spirit and in truth. The word truth, if you study it from the ancient Egypt, touches on the ma, the mashu, the makeru, the, the ma'at. It reflects that word ma'at, which also may be interpreted as law or, or justice. Now, in spirit, that's the spirituality level. You understand the, is a spirit is recognizing the spiritual truth. You understand? That's not just outside of you, but that's within you. Who are you? You understand? Are you a sheeple? And if you're a sheeple, are you a lost sheeple or a found sheeple? Do you have Yeshua HaMoshia as your, as your shepherd? Or are you just one of the lost sheeple going to the slaughter? Are you awakened or somewhat conscious? Those are the ones, those sheeple that have become the sheeple with the shepherd. So you recognize Bible, you recognize Christ, so forth and so on, on a certain kindergarten or otherwise immature level. That means that you have faith. You, you say, yes, Jesus loves me for the Bible tells me so, but you really can't tell what the Bible says or how to act it out or work it out in spirit and in truth. Most people think this, this book right here is just like a religious book. One of the uses, and unfortunately one of the common abuses by the Gentiles of this book has been in the religios, tying back, holding down. But that's just one of the uses slash abuses of this book. This book is also a template. You understand? It's also a manual. You understand? It's also a scientific book. When interpreted from its proper Ethiopian Hebrew perspective. You understand? But most of us, that right there has to be learned. All those things. You might have heard about Ethiopia, but can you articulate it? And do you know it according to the principles? In other words, are you disciplined in it, or you just got some information, you have some knowledge? You know, we don't want the information of the tree of good and evil. We want the knowledge of the truth. You understand? Because it says, ye shall know the truth. You understand? And the truth shall set you free. Now, most of us think that we know the truth, but what we got, all many of you all have, is bits and pieces of information. You ever hear them say, like, on some of these programs and these shows and things, they'll be like, even after 9-11, they say that we got a lot of intel. There's a lot of data out there. We got a lot of intel on this or that or the next thing, but we're still trying to make intel. Uh, you know, we have a lot of data and stuff and information, but they're still trying to make intel out of it. You hear them use this kind of, uh, they say governmental, but it's very scientific. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the sheeple and folks that, that have been dumbed down, you understand, it's a bad, bad, bad. They don't understand that's like, yo, government folk, that's political stuff. I'm not in that. I'm just trying to make paper and just trying to go about my little business. And it's only until some light turns on in you, spiritual light of consciousness. And a lot of folks have been testifying to this. As soon as they become conscious, and in particular, when they become Christ conscious, they start to notice that a whole bunch of trials and tribulations be coming at them. You know, that, that, that people who wasn't their enemies become their enemies. You understand? Things that wasn't happening before start to happen, and they, they start to get this, what they call it, persecution complex. But that is real. You understand? So a lot of y'all brothers and sisters, maybe we haven't gotten to speak to you directly, and that there's been a few who have communicated to us on a more or less regular basis concerning their, their personal, you understand, almost like martyrdom, in a sense, their personal, on the road to sainthood, as it is. And what we mean as sainthood is caduce, on their road to living a caduce life, living separated and apart, you understand, not being unequally yoked. That means they have to make changes. When you're born again, you're going to have to make changes in your life. You understand? Certain changes. You, you, once you conscious something, you say, you know, wow, I just can't do that no more. 
now these folks that you used to run with and other things are saying, what's wrong with you? What, what's happening? Y'all might say, oh, check out Ross Adonis or Lion of Judah or Ethiopian World Net or, or, or the next brother or sister out there that's putting out a video. And then these, um, these unilluminated familiar people you might have in your life, they start to hate on them. Like we're hearing testimony of ones, you know, don't like the fact that, 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 that they watch these videos, because y'all go back to them and say, yeah, I got this from Brother Iadona, so I was watching this video. And sometimes you encounter, sometimes some folks would you show some people, and they'll be like, wow, that's right and exact, or uh, let me check that out. And they'll come back and say, yeah, that brother was right about that. That's real. You understand? Or some folks just stay in their ignorance. And say, so I don't want to hear about that. That's a cult. That's a this. That's a that. You know what I mean? And seeking to discourage you. I mean, the strangest thing, brothers and sisters, and this is why I go back to the prayer. You're going to say, I'll go forward rather. Forward ever, backward never. So let's go forward to the prayer. The issue of prayer. What is prayer? You understand? And moreover, how to pray. So if you ask folks, and I ask the sister this, and I'm really praying for the sister, but more than anything, I want the sister and other sisters and brothers to learn how to pray with faith. You understand? And understanding what faith is. Brother Tariq Bey has a vid that he did, I think, about symbolism. Really, any Tariq Bey video, and this is just something I and I opinion, you know what I'm saying, on this, but please check it out for yourself. It's to really watch the video, but not just to watch the video, but take notes. I mean, I watched one video, I just watched it, right, and then I was thinking so much on some of the elements in it, and it was like almost, like I couldn't really just just um, go to sleep or rest or whatever, because it was on my mind, so I actually had to watch the video again, and, and, and stop, pause it, you know, you know that jam, you know that way, right, stop, pause, remember back in the days we used to stop, edit, good, good, you know, good times back in the days with, with the stop, pause, cassette editing. But I had to go over the video again and watch portions of it and just dot, jot down notes. Just just jot down some notes. What did he say? He said such and such. So now I know how it was spelled, but I was, I was figuring that I'll find a way to Google it and then find some pages on it and then download those pages. You understand? And if I can, if it's not too much, I'll print it out. Otherwise, I'll try to study up so I can become more versed and, you know, you know, keep a record, keep a documentation. Because for some of you all and some of I and I, some of this documentation that we're taking now, both in the spiritual teaching and also in legal. So I want you to, to have a booklet for, for, for the lawful, you understand, the law studies. You understand? Well, actually, Torah is the law, too. One for the Torah studies and one for the, 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 the secular, the spiritual law studies, Torah, and one for the secular law studies. Because there's a, there's a, there's a set of vids that we're hoping to um, make available that I and I and the, the few co-laborers, I and I, sister wife, and others who are co-laboring with I and I in this ministry are trying to get available as soon as possible, and we'll, 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 y'all willing, y'all live, y'all live, I and I live in good health and sound mind, we'll bring that forward to you and let you know, hey, here it is, you understand, it's here, you understand, as far as the new vids and things that we think are important to become familiar with, you know, watch it, sometimes you have to just watch the vid as, quote, entertainment, Entertainment means to retain something in mind. Look it up. Look up the etymology of the word. But then you have to study it. And this kind of brings I and I to this. Uh, you could, uh, and then let's get this. This kind of brings I and I to this particular level of, um, of, 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 of reasoning, right? Of reasoning and, 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 and conversation um, and dialogue on this particular level is, is on prayer. He says, us on prayer, because many ones have been faithfully studying and growing in the teaching, but it's been having an effect, positive and spiritual, in their inner life, in their spirit, 
in their soul, their psychological, and in the, even their body life have been learning certain things that are more healthy, whether it's keeping, remembering the Shabbat and finding that time to really give Jah the praise and to, and to set that apart because really the Sabbath, the Shabbat was made for man. Man wasn't made just to to observe the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for us. And I've been dialoguing with ones on this. Let me share this with you. The Falashas, the base of Israel. Right? The, 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 the ones known as the... Hold on for a moment, my brothers and sisters. The ones known as the Falashas or the Beta Israel. I must have left that in the other kufa, the other portion. The other portion right now. Um, I thought it was... Okay, I'll bring that forward to you. It's a, it's, it's a Falasha anthology. And I touched on it before. It's not a book that we publish, but it's a, it's a book that we would like to publish. And... You know, if we get some of the prerequisites, um, we definitely will publish. You know, I and I, um, brethren and, and the staff, know what we mean by that. We will get it published, but it's called, it's called Falash Anthology. I'm looking around to see if it's on any of these stacks here. But no, the Falash Anthology, the, the Beta Israel, for us, as 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 exilists, as falashas of the West. Those are the falashas of the East. I know you only thought maybe there was only one kind of falasha. No. Josh said that he would, he would scatter us to all over the world, to the four corners. So that means that there must be four kinds of falasha or exilists, which, which when you now look at the 12 tribes and the, and the zodiac, the zodiac, you, you begin to recognize why Revelations, I think, was it Revelation 11, Revelation 12, where it speaks about that uh, a third of the stars, right? There were 12 stars on, 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 the woman's, on the woman's crown, the woman who stood in the moon, and it says that a third of the stars, you know what I mean? A third of the stars. So how many stars would be a third of the stars? You understand? If there were twelve if there were twelve stars. You understand? That means in three parts. It couldn't be three. You understand? It was what 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 four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it had to be four tribes. So we have four winds. So we know about the Beta Israel of Ethiopia in as close to the pristine purity because they maintained their integrity in the sense of they maintain their their name, they maintain their birthright, and even they maintain the prophetic nationhood, i.e. Ethiopia. So they are our 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 natural born, you know saying, um, fellow citizens. Now, we are exiled over here. We have been, quote, enslaved. We were never slaves in that sense, but we were enslaved. Many have slave mentalities and have become willingly slaves. You understand? But the, the, the program was to enslave us and then strip from us all identifying marks. See, because if they kept us as Ethiopian, you understand? Notice when they mentioned Ethiopia, when the British wanted to get us on the side of the British against the Americans. Then they said, we'll call you the Ethiopian Regiment. And, and, and why did the British do that? Because it was a political ploy and strategy. Because by calling us Ethiopian, then the American slave driver would have been in violation of maritime international law. You know, by taking a, another nation's in, in other words, another national people, another sovereign people, you understand? Because then they would have to display, you know, the, the, the papers of authorization. How do you have this other nationality halfway around the world? So this is why they had to do that three-fifths game and then say people are nigger, niggers, blacks, and coloreds, and then put you under, under, under European names so that if you end up even in the civil court, you can't represent yourself because you are using their names. And by default of law, you have actually become a ward of the, state, of the state. So they have trusteeship. And this is something that comes out of English law, so forth and so on. 
brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You might say, why are you dealing with a lot of law and so forth and so on? You know, what you went to study this school? We studied it, but we didn't go to school for it. In fact, if we knew now or then what we know now, we probably, we went, to, we went for medicine, you know what I'm saying, as a major. And medicine is still good. You understand? But there also needs to be legal recourse and remedy. You understand? And how, as things are running right now, everything is between the courthouses and the doctors. And Leonard Percival Howell or Gangunguru Marah, as his more sovereign name, of the writer of the Promise Key and the Howellites community, he says, don't follow courthouses and doctors. They will fake you to death. And he said this back in the 1930s. And now when we look at those documents like the Promise Key, the Royal Parchment Scroll of Black Supremacy, having a greater understanding of, of what these legal, these terminologies mean and recognizing, yes, they come out of Africa from ancient Egypt, so forth and so on, and through the Hebrews and then the Gentiles got onto it for a time, and now we come down to where we're at right now. So we have to use recourse and remedy, and we have to make public notes and correct these things. This is what I'm saying to all brothers and sisters. Please get up on this, this, this conversation that's, that's being conducted, not just by I and I, but there's a lot of other ones. You mentioned Tyreek Bay, um, Brother Anoop, and there's, a, a, there's other brothers that, and sisters that we weren't familiar with, but as we started to investigate this whole subject matter, yes, the Moors, I would say of all the groups, the Moors have the best, both theoretical and actionable. It's just unfortunate, and Tariq Bey already, uh, of the Moors, is already making this known to many ones and ones that um, the problem has been ones have left it to a theoretical argument that they have not taken it to fruition. You know, and when we look at the spiritual level of prayer, and, and see, you know why prayer and, and true spirituality is so important? is because when you start to encounter these, these reproaches upon your person and your rights and what you know in your heart and your mind is true and just and see these manipulations of it. it, 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 it true spirituality, it, it's able to recharge and renew you and keep you confident, confident in the victory of good over evil. And what I'm seeing among a lot of brothers and sisters who might not have had a, a, a really a full tank, only had a half tank or a quarter tank of spiritual gas, so to speak, is that when these situations hit on them, it's like, it's like they, are, they are having a lot of psychic problems, psychical problems. Now the courts and, and, and they're trying to use this psychological evaluation, you know, argument. Then they can get you under the doctors. So if you have the courthouses and the doctors, you know, they're trying to give you these sort of, sort of big pharmaceutical drugs. And I, I never, I knew these drugs were out there. But I thought it was like before, well, you go to your doctor, have a problem, your doctor diagnoses you, boom, they give you a prescription. But now what they're doing is they're using the, 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 the so-called perversion of justice in the legal system and our ignorance. See, what they're doing is using mischief by the law, but most of us are so ignorant. You know, when, when we get something that comes from the courts or something like that, the first thing we do is, is we panic in our hearts and our minds. It's like our spirit, we lose our spirit, we lose our, our soul, we, our psych, you know, we get very paranoid, and that's a psychological state, that's a phobia. You understand a phobia is a fear. Look it up in the Greek, in the New Testament. It says that we have not been given the spirit of fear. You understand? But a sound mind. You know, we haven't been given the spirit of fear. That's a phobia. You see, but notice when it says we, this is we who are being faithful. You understand? In the terms of the covenant. You understand? We are living within the covenant in spirit, the spirituality level, and in truth, in the actional level. You see what I'm saying? And that means 
in order to keep that spirituality level true, sometimes we have to act. You understand? Like as Matthew says, we will fight if necessary. So the first thing we have to decide, is it necessary? And if it's necessary, in what way? And I'm saying that it's, it's, it's the law that we need to know about sooner than later, and we need to correct, you understand, correct our status. See, it's because of that incorrect 13th and 14th Amendment status that so many of our people, Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, got along with the false and artificial names that they have. You understand? That means that when they end up in a court case or so forth, they can't, go, they can't represent, they can't pro se or what. I think they can, but usually they will not be allowed to because, legally speaking, they are not in their proper person. In other words, the, the courts will say, and as it's set up, they, they've already laid out this argument. It's quite clear. You know, it's not like we are saying, well, let's try this out. We're not saying let's try this out, like let's see if it works. It already works, but the, 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 the thing is this. We have to be versed with it, and we have to use this kind of quiet time that many may have in their lives to, first of all, um, 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 get prepared, get informed. First thing, to get informed. In other words, get the information. We got some information. Others have information. Start little groups. If anybody, you know, if you meet ones and ones, because sometimes you'll meet ones and ones who are not interested in this. Listen, the way the system or the shit system is running, if they, when, if and when they get hit, you understand, by the, the, the systemics, you know, then they become interested. And I can't tell you how many folks, you understand, whether they, they, they are, are go to court, something happens with court or their status or their family or something else like that, or they end up in jail, you understand, on, on something or another, and many times it's not even any kind of a felony or a crime because they've already put us in an inferior status where we're talking about civil rights instead of civil liberties because we're looking at that Constitution, the United States Constitution, as our enemy, but the enemy is our ignorance and our lack of faith. You remember the disciples went to Christ and said, yeah, we tried to um, heal this person or that person, and we, wasn't un we was unable. And, 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 and the disciples say, why was, you know, you know why were, were we unable, right, to um, do anything? And Christ said, because your, your, your unbelief, your lack of faith. You see what I'm saying? Because you really didn't trust it. You was not confident about it. You know, so that's one thing I look at when I'm giving counsel to ones and ones, or I listen to if I can't see them. You have to... If you lack that confidence in it, notice this. Most people have more faith in, in, in Babylon or a man-made system that is not eternal, that has not been down here forever, that basically is a Johnny-come-lately, come so to speak, on the whole world scene. They have more faith in this limited so-called 225 or so year period kind of thing than they do in, 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 in principles, you understand, that were here before this, this present um, occupational government and that will be here afterward. The question is this, will we be able to preserve ourselves and our posterity, anything after the aftermath of this? In other words, are we putting them on good ground? It's like the parable of Christ. Is it good ground that we are sowing on, or we're not even paying attention to the ground? What's the ground? The ground is the foundation. What is our foundation based on? This is why we go over these teachings and present kind of different, different kind of scenarios in order to explain or, or pick some subject matter out of the news. Like there's a, there's a couple of there's a lot of subject matters in the news that each one of them shows certain demonstration of law. And now we understand better than ever why a lot of black people, Negroes, blacks, and colors, and others always say in crisis we should be like the Jews. And then I always thought, well, don't we know that really we are the, the Jews? In other words, we are the Hebrews, the black Hebrews, the Israelites, the Afro-Shemitic people. Don't, don't they know? 
and, and a lot of black folks admit it. Yeah, Moses, so forth and so on. And there's a lot of evidence that also admits it. They try to dispute this, the Gentiles, but they, they would have to because if they admit it, then they're going to have to look at all the, you know, the whitewash they've done, and people are going to say, what's up with that? So they, 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 they kind of are stalling tactics. But we know it's true because the evidence is there, and the evidence has never been um, um, refuted. They just do something else and say somebody else did a research, somebody else did this or whatnot, and they say some say, they indirectly insinuate that all the facts and evidence, you know what I'm saying, for the, for the racial Afro-Shemiticness or Ethiopian Hebrewness of the Bible and the Bible patriarchs, so forth and so on, they just try to dismiss it by a roundabout and indirect argument. You understand? But that's also a legal point, too. You understand? That's also because it, it's, it's a make-believe. It's a psychological attack to make people think that, well, we're just saying that they were black because, you know, we're looking for something. You know, they say, oh, you're trying to be Jews now. And so we throw a lot of the evidence at them. Bang, 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 bang. Look all this evidence here and there. Then, then when we link with the Ethiopians, they try to say and convince some um, half-original H.O. Ethiopian, some whole Ethiopian, or half original Ethiopians that, well, you're not Ethiopian, you American, you Negro, you such and such. Them, them, them traitorous people. You understand? And we say traitorous in defense of the faithful and true Ethiopians or imperial Ethiopians. How dare they? Don't they recognize the divine judgment? Who causes famine? Is it God or is it man? You're blaming Hala Selassie and you say he's a man. That cause it. Who causes famine, God or man? Once biblical holy nation. What does the Bible tell you? There was a famine in the time of Abraham. There was a famine in the time of Isaac. I think there was a famine in the time of Jacob. There was famine through the Bible. Who caused that? The particular king? Or was, according to the Bible, that was for different reasons at different times, but that was in the hands of the Almighty God. Who caused it to reign? your politicians, your, your, your kings, your rulers. So Ethiopia's problem, like most Negro, black, and color problem at the present time is a God problem. Leave them for right now. We got some issues that we have to solve here. You see, because when we overcome Goliath, you see what I'm saying? When we overcome, you know, Goliath, you know, when David overcomes, when little David overcomes Goliath, you understand? Then, then Israel and Judah, you know, can work out their, their, their differences, right, you know, at, at that present, at, at that future, but near time, because things are happening with the media, things are happening at lightning speeds, and this is why I keep saying to ones and ones, first of all, the first thing is, 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 is building up one's faith, like I said, people have more confidence, you know what I mean, in these, um, these, uh, exchangeable promissory notes or credit slips, you know what I'm saying, they have more faith in this, and they don't even, they just have learned what this is all about. You know what I'm saying? And, and those at the highest level will tell you that this is magic. This is sorcery. You understand? This is, this is a, and, and people say, well, if it's, well, why do you use it? That's such and such. Well, because so many people believe in this. You understand? And the resources are being controlled by people who believe in this. So we're in a kind of a consent thing as humanity right now. You know, now what becomes of it? Well, that's really up to people. It's not about God swooping in and dealing with this. Since people know all that they know, you know what I mean? Basically, um, they're either part of their freedom or they're part of their continual incarceration and even um, their children. And now we see that Babylon now is coming after the children seeking to take children from their parents on all sorts of level. And, and I pray, my brothers and sisters, that these sort of situations, that they don't kidnap your children too because they have done this. You know, They did it covertly before, but now they're doing it overtly. When, when they made the black mother, you understand, and the minority so-called black and Latino mother in order to get the, the social benefits, which was theirs, by human right, it made them lie or sign agreements that they don't know where the father is at, so forth and so on. You know what I'm saying? And um, so that was the divide and conquer. Willie Lynch, how to make a slave. 
so we have all these baby mama dramas and deadbeat baby father drama and the black man against the black woman, the black woman against the man, the children are, are just, just, just disgusted in their own way. You understand? And sometimes turn their back against the father, sometimes turn it against the mother, sometimes turn it against the father and mother, and become another pawn, you understand? In order to become another operative or, or agent for the same. That's what's called trauma based mind control. That's another example of mind control. You see, because it created an artificial situation that affected real time and real lives and real people. You understand? And made people believe that this was so. Because the alternative, so much of the truth, has been either suppressed or blasphemed. You know, oh, you don't want to get down with those people, those Negroes over there, and those such and such, turns you away from these other things, like such as the Moorish, the Moorish, um, the Moorish teachings and practices. So you see, when we talk about sovereignty, which is the overall issue, before you can get to sovereignty, there's a lot of smaller steps that you've got to take. Sovereignty is not to say, I am sovereign. You know, and we don't want to get into the, the long version of explaining why one cannot just say that they are sovereign. They can say that they are seeking to restore their sovereignty, but they have to... Um, make public declaration of certain of certain um certain changes or facts you know you know what you know what they have to they have to they have to reclaim their rights they have to correct their own status it's not like nobody's going to swoop in and kind of do this for any of us unfortunately the, the organizations that were set up in the 30s and so forth and so on, the Moors and even the Federation, have not been consistently operating as they should have. And that's a whole other Negro, Black, and Color, Smith, Jones, Johnson, and Jackson, if you please, the JJ issue, you know, um, where, where, where they went with George, George Jefferson and Sally Struthers instead of continuing in the way of their forefathers. They got ashamed of what those people, they wanted to get civil rights. And as soon as they wanted to get civil rights, they denied the bigger picture. And the bigger picture was our human rights. You know, so when we say we should be like the Jews, I say on a certain level, we should learn who we are. And when we learn who we are, you know, and, and some black folks will say, I ain't no Hebrew, I ain't no Ethiopian, I ain't no, well, you know what, maybe they're not. You see, Christ says, by your words, you know, you'll be justified by your words. You'll be condemned. So if they want to say, now people say, well, what about if I say I am and I have a sibling or a relative or somebody else who say they're not? You remember back in slavery, they really mixed up people. They sold one, one child over here. They sold the next one over here. They mixed, they even married people. Not married them. They didn't marry them, but they sexed them. They bred them in with each other. So a lot of seed and stuff is all mixed up. That's why you might have um, one or two of a household or family of a city, and ones are frustrated and getting all emotional, like, like, Ross, I dance, I need you to talk to this one or that one because they ain't, they ain't getting it. I'm like, I, I'm trying to tell them. I'm like, what do you tell them? And, the, and I listen to the folks, and the folks, you know, from hearing the, the teachings only maybe a couple of times and doing their own studies, they basically have the basic, you know, the basic square of it. You know, what they're saying squares with the truth. And, and I'm like, what more can I say? What you expect me to do, walk on, tap dance on water or something like that? That ain't going to happen. Not because we do not have in and through Christ the ability to, but it's not about those sort of tricks. You know, it's not about those sort of tricks. You are violating the... Uh, human right and that God given right. You see, ones have the right to decide their own destiny. But now if they're deciding, well, I want to go to hell, you have to decide like the Bingy song, I will not go with you. You understand? Know and and you have to make that particular decision. Now of course in some situations you got the demoniacs, you got violent and aggressive people. That's why I say to pray. So first you have to get your spirit and your soul in harmony. So then the body follows. What's happening when you don't have your spirit and soul 
in harmony and in balance, your body or, 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 or the physical, the fleshy side is dictating to your fear, your fearful spirit and your fearful soul what you should do. You see, and that always is a losing proposition, whether sooner or whether later. So I'm trying to make the connection here between, between our spirituality and our true, in the global international sense, legality or our, our human rights on that, on, on, on that particular level, that, that we need both. And both is actually in oneness when Christ says, in spirit, right? In spirit is the spirit. What's the spirit? The spirit is the breath. You know, if, uh, if when, when they say something to you, how is your breath? When you get fearful, do you ever check your breath? You get frustrated. You get, you get tightness of breath. You know what I'm saying? And there's a whole physical, psychosomatic reaction. And like I said, I would love to not just teach on this, but share what I've learned on this from various resources. But the evidence is out there. I'm giving you hints. I'm trying to, because the time is, is short, you know what I'm saying? And there's not really opportunity. Uh, we should not uh, waste time with certain issues that are like dead enders. You know what I'm saying? Our spirituality and our legality is not a dead end unless you like to feed your enemies before you can feed yourself and your family. If you like to feed your enemies and feed others, you understand? Know other other um, illegal um, European immigrants who never were naturalized. I mean, you know, they talk about our Hispanic, um, if they're not our brothers, we can call them our cousins. You understand? Know but, but they talk about them coming to the country illegally, so forth, and not, not being naturalized. I say, wait, wait for a moment. Did the Indians have a, the Native Americans, did they have a board of, 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 of naturalization? You know, I'm, I'm being a little bit facetious, but you understand, what, what hypocrisy. But they've been allowed to get away with so much hypocrisy. Of course, people say because they had the gun and they had violence and so forth and so on. Well, it's very clear that a lot of that's been equalized though it's not completely equal. That's why they're using the law right now as a psychological attack because once they can defeat you in soul, in your, in your psyche, you know what I mean, then they can do whatever they want to your body. And, and this is one of the reasons why the courthouses and the doctors faking the people to death is happening. And perhaps it's because of some of the, the firsthand encounters with some of the... Um, heavily burdened brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters who are, I say, extraordinarily heavily burdened, not because they're carrying more of the universal load, but because of whatever has gone on in their personal life, they have not maintained discipline. You understand that they have either made an unfortunate compromise or, like I say, they've cheated, not on their flesh or blood boy or girlfriend. No, they've cheated on Ja. You know, they made a commitment to Ja. They said, I love Ja, I'll follow Ja, I'll do it Ja's way, and somehow they've gone back on that word, so they've fallen prey and victim to the world, and they still have soul, they still have consciousness, because that's why they just don't give up and, 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 and go with the world and go along with them. They still pull back, but they're in that double-mindedness. It's like they say yay and nay. You understand? And they said a double-minded man is what? An unstable in all of his ways. It's unstable. And that instability is that soul of that psychic crisis that we all have experienced. Uh, you know, I can't say I have not experienced that. That's why I know what I'm talking about. I've been through that. And then I've overcome that. I found the keys, the spiritual keys to overcome that in my own heart and mind. You understand? Know True, there's a, there's a temptation. It's always a temptation, but you don't have to give in to temptation like the Our Father prayer says, what? Deliver us from temptation. And if the only prayer you really know how to pray right now is the Our Father prayer, you understand? Know you need to develop a prayer life. And don't say it absentmindedly. You understand? Just, just, blah, 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 and that I lay me down to sleep. Please stop those unbiblical things. That's actually what sets you up for the enemy because it's not there in the Bible, so that means it's not of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. 
and where it's, where it's from. But one thing we know, it's not there in our book, in our manual, you know what I'm saying? And so we don't really find this as a part of true spirituality. I don't find our ancient Ethiopian Hebrew or Afro-Shemitic people or Christian people, true Christian Ethiopian people praying some nonsense like that. Nowadays they are because there's, there's a global confusion going on. And nowadays they are because um, Father is sifting every nation. Remember, the last shall be first, the first shall be last. That's why Ethiopia was the first to fall in that sense to this modern shit stem because of the the carelessness of the people. You know what I'm saying? To their own history, to God first of all, and their history. Nineteen seventy four, seventy five. The careless Ethiopians betrayed, turned their backs on God and their history and all the woe and everything. In our spiritual, biblical and form opinion is basically the reason why overall they have gone through what they have gone through until they repent. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. You're a Christian? You're so-called Christian? You believe so-called in Christ? If you believe in Christ, then why do Israelites get in that position according to the Bible? Because they broke covenant. Right now, if you get into agreement, even to pay a certain bill or whatever like that, and you don't, what they do, they take you to court. And then they're seeking recourse and remedy against you. And back in England, they used to throw people in debtors prison. You understand? And perhaps that's what's coming along now, now that they're doing the ward of state thing. The ward of state connect with trustees. That same thing they do all over Africa. They put all these African colonized nations to trusteeship. You understand? They couldn't do it with Ethiopia. But just like they could not crucify Christ until there was an Iscariot, a Judas Iscariot. And that's how they were able to get there. So you kind of recognize that we as a people collectively and individually, we bear a, 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 a awesome and a crushing responsibility. So one can listen to this, let it go in one ear and out the next, and then wah, 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 help me out. This is happening. And I have to ask you, did, did you not hear? Did you not believe at least, have faith in I and I report? I mean, at least check it out. For, we told you this wasn't our teaching. This is not our own thing, you know, because actually, if it was just we doing our own thing, we might just go ahead with ourselves and why we spend time, you know, putting ourselves, in a sense, on the line. But, you know, a soldier for the king of kings has to show himself faithful. You see what I'm saying? That's only if he has faith and trust and confidence in his commander and in the King of Kings and his Christ. Some of y'all are just too selfish and might have to get spanked a little bit more before you really wake up. And I pray that if you have to be delivered to Satan for blasphemy, that, that it is still your spirit will be saved in the day of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. But to the others who are taking this message more to heart and to mind, Learn how to pray. Prayer is very important. I want to give you this key. I gave this key to another um, another of our Wendemoch, Kawendemoch Andu. You understand? Um, or the Wendemoch Andu, in a sense. I gave this uh, some prayer keys right here. Um, I think it was John. John, I recall this. John chapter, was it 14, verses 13 to 14? Now, like I said before, a lot of folks say, well, I pray like I like, so forth and so on. And the question I have to ask is, and you don't have to answer me, and all you can't answer me now, so that's good right now. You can really, really, you know, um, check yourself. You understand? Um, be honest before the Spirit of God in Christ. You understand? Um, do you pray? And do you know how to pray? I think a lot of folks don't really do it. They only do the, oh, God, Hail Mary prayer like when they're back against the wall and they think imminent danger is happening, then they, you know, I mean, and if you've been in that situation, and I've been in a couple situations like that, and that's what proved to me, you, you know, was that my prayer life was whack. You know, yeah, you knew all this head knowledge and the Bible says this and so forth and so on, but what are you putting into fruition? See what I'm saying? Because I have one. I look at I look at Holy Ethiopia. How was Ethiopia able to overcome those greater odds? 
Haile Selassie tells us, if we were listening to his voice, he said it's because of our faith, only with our faith and our force of arms. He didn't say because of our force of arms first, but it's faith. Whenever you hear folks talking about, yeah, we need to pick up our tools and such. No, your tools, really. You know what your tools is at this present time? Your tools is this paper. This is the paper. I was going to show this as a demonstration from before, and I did use this before right here. This is, this is probably one of the greatest tools that we all have right and access to. You understand? What happens in these four corners? That's what makes a contract. That's what makes a covenant. The unfortunate thing is that you don't use this paper to protect your sovereign and your inalienable rights, but you have them write a contract there and then cite you out, force you to sign it, so forth and so on. And then it's like going through hell and high water, you know, to get things back on a proper and a just footing. And thus proves um, what David said in the Bible and in the Psalm, should I say, where it, where it says right here, it says, um, it's Psalm, Psalm 50. Is it 50 right here? 50, uh, where is it? Where, where he talks about um, how they, they use law. You understand? And, and in fact, when you look at Christ in real time, you understand, in real time, isn't he speaking about law? He's contending with them at law. You understand? He's contending with them at law. It's this psalm right here, and call upon me in the day of trouble. So we're going to go to verse, verse uh, we're in Psalm 50 for a moment. Let's just touch on Psalm 50 for a moment right here. In Psalm 50, he says, um, in fact, let's just go from the very top. You understand? Let's just go from the very top. Let's just put this in the fullness right here. This is a Psalm of Asad. Now, when we gave you um, um, uh, John 14, 13 to 14, let me just, in case, in case this program, I don't know how much time we have left in this particular program. Hopefully, y'all will and we'll, we'll continue this. But while we have the opportunity right here, there's a certain order. You understand? For the faithful and the true, as we said from the top of this, there's a slight, not difference, it's a matter of recognition. See, the faithful and true rise to far eye. See the glory of God being revealed, the, the fatherhood of God being revealed in Ketamawi, Haile Selassie, and Abu Kadus. So we recognize that. So when we pray to the Father, we do so according to Scripture, according to, according to the access code in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So we ask our Father in the name of Christ, in the authorization of Christ. Now some would say, well, why do I have to pray? If God is God, and we're not going to deal with the atheists right now, though there's a logical reason for their, for their non-sequitur uh, way of thinking. There's a logical reason for it doesn't make it right, but it means that we can overstand it. They would say, well, why do we have to pray? You know, why do we have to say it out, or why do we have to pray if he already knows? It's not because Jah does not know. It's because we have to free things in the atmosphere. If you want to get into the spiritual mechanics of it, you understand some of the spiritual metaphysical mechanics of it, you understand? So it's not like we're praying, you understand, because to some unknown thing out there. You know, then we recognize and we touch the, the, the rock and the groundation of God in our person because he is our life. You see what I'm saying? And you might see somebody else is alive, but you can only know that life of the life giver in, your, in and through him in yourself. But you have to find yourself. And when you find yourself in spirit and in truth, then you'll find the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when we make our petitions, it frees things in the elements. It's not like we're letting him know because he doesn't have ability otherwise to know. That's foolishness. That's thinking like a Gentile. That's not thinking as a true black Jew. 
or as a as an Ethiopian Hebrew national. Oh, we right now would be Ethiopian Hebrew international on that, but still a part of the Ethiopian Hebrew Commonwealth. Yo, was, now let's get into the Psalm and and for that's why we gave that verse John fourteen thirteen to fourteen because he's telling you right there. And folks that say, well, I I don't really have to pray. Uh, to the Father, I could pray to the Mother, and I'll have to pray in Jesus or Yeshua. Allow them. You understand? If you want to follow that foolishness, you go ahead. You understand? Tell me how it works out, if you can. Now, um, Psalm 50 says this right here. It's a Psalm of Asaph. The mighty God, even the Lord, Yahweh, have spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Out of Zion, remember the African Sion. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty. Interesting, the word beauty in Kabbalah is Tiferet. Tiferet is the Hebrew of Tafari, the name of the man child. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. God has Zohar, He has illuminated. Right? Remember, I told you the Talmud, Kabbalah are not really books, they are books about it. You understand? They are processes. They are metaphysical, spiritual processes, right, that you have to learn to activate. You can read books about it, but if you think Kabbalah and Talbot and, and, and Zohar are particular books in a sense, you know, as we say as Hebrews, that's for the Gentile. You understand? We allow the Gentile because the Gentile is caught for a lot of stupidity. You understand? Unless they come in the Moshiach then the Moshiach has great grace with them because they acknowledge our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I think that's an honorable and, a, and a, that's a highly spiritual thing for any Gentile to do. You know, considering, you know, the whole mix-up, upside-downedness of this present world, they can just go along with white supremacy and not acknowledge the divine, the divine um, blackness or Christ's, um, his, 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 his humanity, as it were. It says, our God, our God shall come and shall not keep silence the utterances of the King of Kings. Right? A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very temptuous round about him. Look, look at what happened, you understand, during the manifestation of the King of Kings of Ethiopia. We have war, the invasion of Ethiopia. He, he makes the prophetic words, the match has been struck in Ethiopia, the flames will burn Europe five years or so before they ever had any, they, they laughed it off. Five years later, who was laughing then? Jah was laughing in the heaven, see Psalm 2. You understand? Yes, Jah laughs. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. I keep saying this is really all about the lost sheep of the Beit Israel, this whole global situation. Peace in the Middle East, you understand? Rise, O lost sheep. Rise, Beit Israel. Rise, Ethiopian Hebrews. You understand? Uh, learn to live in covenant. You know, um, re reclaim and preserve your birthright. You'll see this whole global situation change. And if the reptilians, the, 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 their agents and other beings on this earth who are trying to keep this as a prison planet, if they lock down, they can't stop our higher brothers because Christ went to call them. Remember, Yeshua said that, and he went up in the cloud. Oh, people say, that sounds like extraterrestrial. What do you think Ethiopian is? Anyway, let's go forward right here. Um, gather my saints. My Kedusan, my Hasidim, together to me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Through Yeshua HaMoshiach, we have the perfect sacrifice, one time, all time. You understand? Um, and the heaven shall declare his righteousness. You hear that right there? See, people think I'm talking about some extraterrestrial stuff. Oh, you trying to talk about some uh, extraterrestrial stuff. Nah, well, it is. We don't need no extraterrestrials. Okay, whatever. Um, verse 6 says, And the heaven shall declare his right. How is heaven going to declare his righteousness? <laughs> you, you, you ever see it strike 12 o'clock? No, on the heavens. You ever see the heavens strike 12 o'clock? What do you think all this, this, this phobia about 
about 2012 and the great beyond is all about, right? Why do you think they keep rushing to get out there in space and now they don't want to show people, so they say it's not a a public thing. Let's make the space program private. A private corporation doesn't have to, it's only shows what what they're in contract, in contract with the NASA, so see how they use the law right here. People are like, oh, because they couldn't afford it. This is a good excuse. Anyway, and the heavens show the clear, they couldn't afford it, but it was taxpayers' dollars, but they could afford billions of dollars. Anyway. And the heavens show declare his righteousness for John, for God is judge himself. Say law. And that's to that's say to all these false grudges and judges, you know, y'all think that people are going to rise up and hurt you in flesh. No. What about he who can destroy your, your spirit, your soul, and your flesh in hell? for your false grudging and judgment and perversion of, of, of law and order. Don't you recognize the high position the Almighty has given you? Y'all make us, y'all tell the people, preachers, preach Romans 13. But see, if the people understood the full context of it, they will recognize that it's the government that should be more in fear of the full implication of that and not the people. But keep the people ignorant and they can keep you know, using this wiggle room in, in law, and that wiggle room is your own ignorance and, moreover, our own ignorance. Say la. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel. So you see how this is speaking to Israel then, but then Yahweh gives us the upgrade in Amos 9 and 7. He says, aren't you like the children of Ethiopian to me, O children of Israel? So if you're like, if, if you're like the children of the Ethiopians, can't we not say, hear, O oh my people, and I will speak, O oh Ethiopian Hebrews, i.e. Israel? Now, some would say, because they want to be ignorant, they want to be stupid, they want to argue with John's prophet. Now, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about Amos. They want to know better what John and Amos meant and say, oh, that's not to say anything about the Ethiopians. you, you got to watch that. Watch that. Because John's getting tired of it because enough people have been presenting you information. You want to play ignorant. You know, so it's not us you should fear. You know, it's not us that give you breath of life or the life giver. You know what I'm saying? It's not us that control your fate in this world and the world to come. You understand? But that lying and that ignorance, that's what controls it right there. Because John is just. He is judge himself. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against thee. You see, a lot of people want to get their back rubbed, you know what I mean, and encourage. No, there's a testimony against Israel and the Israelites and we as once lost but now found. Because so many of us recognize the same information but yet playing all this divide and conquer because one don't want to recognize Zion as the African Zion, as Ethiopian, Hala as the King of Kings, and that being our divine heritage. You keep playing around. There's only so much time on the clock, you know, before the hour strikes. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings. You know, really, he's not, that's not the problem, your religiosity. You understand? To have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy foes. He don't need to make a scapegoat out of anybody. You know what I'm saying? No, he goes. For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. They're his. He's the, he's the blameless creator. He don't need you to sacrifice some animal. He already gave you the, the perfect sacrifice in our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshia. Now live right. Live up. Take responsibility. Period. You know, I want to be you know, torturing animals because of your guilty conscience. How dare you? I know all the fowls of the mountain, all the birds, all the pigeons. I see pigeons cluck, cluck, clucking away. And the wild beasts of the field are mine, Jai is saying. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. If I wanga, wanga gut, I not mean, tell thee. He said, he said, they don't have to tell you if, if John were hungry. And this is interesting because he's the creator. Okay, he's making a metaphorical statement, but then he does manifest in his, in his chosen vessel. 
in Hila Salat. If he's hungry, he don't have to tell you the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Talking about the real world. The world that has been superimposed upon by the world that you think is the world, but really it's a make believe world, and you're making it believe that it's real is what holds up his unreal existence. There's, there's so much power in the Matrix because you give it power. Think about it. You remember in the Matrix movie, it was they're using the people as battery? That was, that was Sophia Stewart's wonderful way of writing there to really reflect that they use our psychic energy. I went through this whole reason for couple ones and ones, and the sister and the sister, if you're, if you're listening, Sister Khalifa, you understand, Sahila, and, and, and others out there, and I told you, you laughed, but I said, I was going to, if you, if you watch the videos, I'm going to point you out, because John ja has put a calling on you and many of y'all, but, but like a lot of us, we've dabbled with the world. We've been driven by our lust, our, our desires, and other things. But see, that means we, we now, they exercise psychical and even physical law on us because we got into certain um, meeting of the mind. We got into contractual agreement and obligations. While our soul still tells us that Jah is true, we, we, we've gotten compromised. You see what I'm saying? And that is what's leading to this kind of wrestle over our soul. We have to repent. We have to return to the King of Kings in the name of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, and we have to work out our salvation. Each of us know what we have to do. And if you don't, then pray and listen to that small, still voice. It will speak and you will hear. But the question is, will you do? You understand? Like I said, most folks, when the Holy Spirit speaks to people and rebukes them for what they've been doing, they think it's the devil talking to them. They say, oh, Josh.